I, I, I failed to do that prior. Open your Bibles to Genesis 6. Genesis 6, I'm going to read some verses to establish what I'm going to be talking about. Oftentimes, when the preacher stands, uh, we have a tendency to know what he's going to be talking about. I know the story. But there's always a story in the story. And I don't care who you are. When you open the scriptures and you read this verse or chapter and, and the Holy Spirit reveals some stuff to you and you have a tendency, well, I got it now. A month later you go back and read it again and he'll turn the page and give you something else in the same spot. So, so, so regardless of what you think you know, I want to put a different slant on our uh, service today. First of all, let, let me ask you to bow your head. Heavenly Father, we come to break the bread of life. This your humble servant, your preacher, your anointed one, bless you. And oh God, I ask for a special anointing on this word this morning, uh, that you be seen, heard, and understood. That I want the Holy Spirit to provide that, that spark within our hearts that we might begin to see things a little different. And if someone leaves here better, oh God, let it be better for being here. And so we thank you once again, oh God, over your word. We know it won't return unto you, Lord. This preacher says thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about the power of faith. The power of faith. Now let me read some scripture for you. The power of faith. Normally when we preach about Noah, uh, we don't normally associate him with faith. And I want to do some corrections on that this morning and for ourselves. But Noah, at the 8th verse, 6th chapter, the 8th verse, says this. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Uh, turn now, just turn the page. We're going to go now to Genesis 7, 5. Genesis 7, 5. And Noah, let me get that, say amen. Amen. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Turn the page once again. Uh, Genesis 9, 20, 21. And Noah began to be a husbandman. That means he was a farmer. He had a vineyard. And he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunk, drunken and he was uncovered within his tent. That means he was naked. Amen. I want us to feel and find where we are. I'm going to do my part and I'm going to pray the Holy Spirit will do his. I want to tell you, I want to open this point with a story. A homeless dog of mixed breed tried it up to a century posted outside of St. James Palace. The ground was frozen, covered in snow, and the dog was cold and hungry. The sentry picked him up, fed him, and named him Jack. Well, Jack became uh, greatly attached to the sentry, whose regiment was the Scots Guards so they adopted Jack as their mascot. True story. Jack went through the Crimean War with his master. The Crimean War, Crimean War was a conflict between Russia, who fought France and Britain uh, from 1853 to 1856. Uh, Russia called it all somewhat surrender, stop fighting, whatever way you want to put it. Jack, the adopted mixed breed, was always at his master's side on the battlefield. 
When his master fell in battle, mortally wounded, Jack stood faithfully with his master until Oak was removed from the battlefield. Bullets flying, bodies falling, but Jack stood by his master. Hearing of this splendid service dog's record, uh, of this noble dog, Queen Victoria was deeply touched. Uh, she had a, a miniature Victoria Cross made, the only one of its kind, which she had placed on Jack's collar. Jack couldn't leave, but when you saw his collar, you knew he was special. I'm not saying Queen Victoria was evil, an evil person. This is my point. The Bible says, if evil men know how to give gifts to their children, how much more do the God of heaven know how to give to his? When we look at the life of Noah, we also see that God also rewards his faithful people. Noah was a man who remained, remained faithful to God during life's hardest circumstances. Circumstances. And if there's anything that runs people out of the church, it's when trouble comes. I remember telling a story a lady told me about she didn't like coming down to that church. Because the people at the church get in your business. The people at the church don't get in your business. You put your business in the street. When the police was at your house and the lights going, everybody knew your business. Not just the people at the church. So we find reasons why we don't do circumstances certain things, when circumstances, when our character is called into question, uh, we find a reason not to do. From Noah's story, uh, Noah's story, we can learn some valuable lessons on how to be faithful. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning about, being faithful. First, there is this. To be faithful to God, one must be loyal to God. Making a loud, loud noise about God is not loyalty to God. Just because you shout, wear the biggest hat in church, that does not make you loyal to God. Just as God knew the hearts of men back then, God see the hearts of men today. Let me make this clear. What Noah did the life he lived, uh, it was not easy. So many of us come to church thinking it's easy. It's not easy. It's hard to be a Christian. Because first of all, to be a Christian, you have to follow somebody else. And so a lot of us don't want to give up control. Well, Noah gave up control. It's, it, it, it can't be easy for us. Nobody gave Noah a word of encouragement. Nobody said, keep the faith, Noah. I'm praying for you, brother. When people today find out we are going through something, somebody will tell us. As wicked as the world is, somebody will tell us, hold on. God is going to work it out. Hold on until your change comes. Yeah. Somebody will give us a word of encouragement. The people in Noah's day live apart from God. I want you to feel the tension. Genesis 6 5 says this And God saw the wickedness of men. He saw that it was so great, so great in all the earth. All the earth. Not, 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 not in Harlem, not in Newark. Not in Plainfield or some other place, all the earth. And, he, and, and God says, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That means sin had full control. This is the environment that Noah worked 
and lived in. Right now, nobody in here can imagine being the only one on earth that believe in God. It, that thought never hit. Even if you are the most corrupt person, you believe that somebody know God. The people in Noah's day, they decided to walk in a different direction, away from God. The people, uh, the people had gone buck wild. Anybody ever heard buck wild? You know what buck wild means? That means you take off all your clothes and just get crazy. Buck wild. There was nothing left to the imagination when it comes to the way they lived. They were buck wild. There was no righteousness about them. There was no consciousness about God. They were buck wild. And God was deeply grieved over the people's sins. Listen, the Holy Spirit whispered in my ear, uh, and, and just said this, and I want you to feel it. God grieved because God cared. Don't sound like much, but he grieved because he cared. He loved. Yeah, yeah. We know from personal experience, you don't grieve over people you don't care nothing about. Oh no. When you hear something has happened to them, <laughs> you say good riddance. Whether it is a tragic, painful situation or whether it's in the graveyard, we wish them well. It should have been going a long time ago. <laughs> Tell the truth. Tell the truth. And God was deeply grieved over the people. Yeah. Wherever God looked, this was the scene. Now God has all seeing eye. He sees and knows all. The Bible says wherever God looked, wherever he looked, he saw corruption. He saw violence. Yeah. And, and wherever he looked, he saw that the people had departed from his ways. And we see it today. And if we see it, don't you know God knew about it a long time before it even entered our minds? So you see, when we do stuff that's not of God, it grieves Him. It grieves Him. Why? Because He loves us. So, so, so we sin by not being faithful. Whatever your thing is, we sin by not being faithful to God's word. It hurts God because he cares. As little as you think you are, your actions hurt God because he cares. Noah could have walked in a different direction. Uh, he could have walked in the ways of the world. He had options. Without a doubt, <clears throat> we all know that the pull of the world is strong. Yes, it is. It, it, it entices us every day. From the street to our homes, the things we do for leisure. Everyone in this church right now could find an avenue of sin if you wanted to. You, you, you got options. No one could have walked in a different direction. Yeah. Because the pull of the world is strong. But in Genesis, Genesis 6, 8, we are introduced to a different kind of person. It is Noah. He was a different kind of person. He decided to be faithful to God. He decided to listen to God. It's a choice. So I ask from the pulpit to the door, are we different people this morning? Are we righteous, blameless, and are we walking with God? Because that's, that's what the God said in his word about Noah. And you know, I find myself saying Jonah sometimes. So if I say Jonah, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. That means Noah dared. 
He dared to go against the game, uh, the grain. He dared to be faithful. Mm -hmm. He dared to be faithful to God. Yeah. When the majority of all he knew, all Noah knew was sin. All around him, he could have easily moved in a different direction. And that's a very big thing. Remember, I said that God knew how to reward his people. In Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found favor. Some transitions say grace. But Noah found favor in the eyes of God. And I, I can't speak for everybody here, but can't nobody do me like the Lord. Let me remind us of what favor means and what it does. Favor, and we have all been recipients of it. Favor is an act of kindness that's given far beyond what a person is doing. That's a, that's a tremendous statement. In fact, God is willing to give you something for your nothing. Let me say that again. Y'all didn't get it. God is willing to give you something for your nothing. Yeah. Far beyond what you what, what is due you, we know that the wages of sin is death. But in Christ we have life. God gave us more than we will do. We will do death. Everything falls under this. When God gave Jesus, Jesus was far beyond what we deserve. Somebody need to say amen. amen. To be faithful, one must obey the word of God. In Genesis 6, 11 to 21, God gave Noah some strange, some strange instructions. Now you have to understand, none of this was familiar to Noah. And sometimes God give us some strange advice. Let me, let me, let me, some instruction. Let, 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 me, let me just tell you what God said. God told Noah, Noah about the end of the world. What? In the flesh, all flesh, God says. The earth is filled with violence, and I will destroy them. He's talking about it. All the people, all the animals, I'm going to destroy them with the earth. God, God gave Noah some strange, some strange instructions. Let's understand. All of this is new. The building of the ark, the go for wood, the pitch for waterproofing, room for the animals. And I, I, I hesitated as I read through this. But nowhere does it say, uh, Noah asked where all these animals could come, come from. I don't know. Scholars still don't know. But this I do know. If you do your part, if you walk faithfully with God, God going to do his part. Sometimes we miss our blessing because we don't stay with God long enough for him to reveal himself to us. This is about faithfulness. Sometimes the instructions of God will seem strange to our ears, even to us in this day and age. Let the Holy Spirit direct our spiritual thinking in a different direction this morning. But the direction that the Spirit is going to direct us is right close to us. It is close as the person next to you. But yet, sometimes it's so hard to move in God's directions. It's strange. It's strange. The Lord instructed us, instructions to us is this. It's strange in this sinful world. It was even stranger before you knew God in the pardon of your sins. But even now, it's strange. But we are instructed by the Lord to do these strange things, he said, love and still hate. He didn't tell you to swim the English Channel. No, no, no. He didn't tell you to get all kind of degrees. He, he keeps us close to one another. 
love instead of hate. He tells us to do this stuff and we will. They criticize Noah for being crazy. He tells us, turn the other cheek. How many of us are willing to turn the other cheek because of our relationship with God? I know you might say, well, <laughs> you might hit me, but I'm going to be looking for the next one. You know what else God tells us to do? That's strange but difficult? Go the extra mile. He's not telling us to do some fantastic thing, some eye-shattering thing, lightning. No. Right next door. Go the extra mile. He says, overcome evil with good. <laughs> strange stuff, huh? No. Simple. But strange because it's hard to do sometimes. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Ha! Yeah, right. When people don't have a reason to hate on you, but they just go on and hate you anyway. And God says, pray for me. Pray for me. Are you kidding me, God? This book just did something that hurt my heart. Pray for me. But they just go on and hit on you. Then God says this. Uh, don't fight. I'll fight for you. It's hard to relinquish what we see we can take care of. He says, I'll fight for you. I I'll fight for you. Letting God take control is a very hard thing to do. And even from the pulpit, it's strange sometimes. It's hard sometimes because the flesh wants gratification. You say something about me, I'm going to say something about you. That's the way we are. You don't have to go outside of this church. Right now, everybody in here can find a reason to change some things in a way that would please God. I know it's true. Nevertheless, God expects obedience. It was not easy for Noah to walk with God, and it's not easy for us. In spite of our and his unusual instruction, we must do the same thing Noah did, obey. The Bible says, all that God commanded, so did he. And we're in the, in the 20, 20, 21st century. It's still hard. Don't let the devil fool you. We are no different than Noah. Because faith is faith. Trusting God is trusting God. Doesn't matter the year and the date. Well, it was easy back then. No, no. Look at what this man had to go through. It was not easy. It was not easy. We have been ridiculed, ridiculed because of our Christian faith. And I can look at every one of you in the eye. If you've not been ridiculed for being a Christian, check the Bible you read. Amen. You check it. Because at some point, even within your own household, you came to church and the minute you walked in, you're done to preaching. You know why? And that was strange when it was first revealed to me. Your loved ones, where I feel they're losing you, they don't know God. They just know you ain't hanging like you used to. And so they want to bring you back. So in order to do that, they try to discredit your actions. Yeah. But you are a different person. Here comes the preacher. But Noah, in spite of being ridiculed, he still obeyed and he remained faithful. You can do it. Noah had uh, no role models. But we do. <laughs> Even if you don't know Jesus, you know somebody in your household. Amen. Somebody on your family tree know the Lord. Somebody, somebody know God. Nobody gave Noah a kind word. 
So what excuse can we make for not being faithful? What excuse can we make for not coming to church when it's raining and snowing or sleeping? When God gave you the car and the car got a heat and it's raining and got a windshield wipes. And when it's snowing, oh, well, it's hot. We got acting. I guarantee you, every car in that parking lot got acting. <laughs> what excuse can we give for not coming into the? And look, it's comfortable up in here. Amen. What excuse can we give? I ain't going down to that church because all they got is fans. You got a fan at your house. You just ain't telling nobody. <laughs> I want y'all to help me, and I'm, I'm gonna. I, I got about another two or three minutes, and I'm gonna. I'm going to leave y'all alone for somebody to throw something at me. <laughs> I want everybody in here to say this word with me, faithful. Faithful. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the first part. You just do the one word. Laugh at, but. Faithful. End of the world is coming, but. Faithful. You building an ark that's crazy, but. Faithful. This is for us. Every Sunday, you going down to that church. Why? Faithful. Being an officer in the church. Faithful. Rehearsing on Thursday, singing on Sunday. Why? Faithful. That's what it takes. Everybody not going to be in your corner. Everybody not going to be in the amen corner. But we must remain what? Faithful. That's the key. To be faithful. You were in good company. When Nehemiah fought, uh, sought to build the wall of Jerusalem, which had been turned, broken down and burned, he was belittled by those who didn't know the Lord. And I came across this word belittled, and I said, you know what? We don't really understand the context of the text. What they were saying was, why are you building the gates and the wall of Jerusalem when it ain't going to come to no good. Why are you expending so much energy doing something that's not worth doing? See, when people don't want to do something, they will try to undermine you doing something. But God has called us to do it. What I do, you might not be able to do. That's not your calling. But everybody that came into this church this morning was called by God to do something. We can't do everything, but we can do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is it, it hit me. If it's not going to amount to nothing, why are you ridiculing Nehemiah? Why? Not only that, when that didn't work, they tried to kill him more than once. They put a hit out on him. If it's not anything, why you want to kill me for doing it? If the church is nothing, why you got to ridicule me for coming? But he remained faithful, and the wall was finished. If you start with God, God will see you through. I just want you to know that. He will see you through. If we are to be faithful, one has to, at all costs, resist the world's temptation. If we are to be faithful, one has to resist, resist, resist. Because it's all around us. It's all around us. I don't want to say it. I'm going to say it. It turns my stomach. When I see so much stuff on television that we are exposed to. That's so wrong. So wrong. And if something don't move on the inside of you, something is wrong with you. If we are to be faithful, we got to resist the pull that's coming against us. Noah was a faithful man. Some Old Testament scholars call him an extraordinary person. But every extraordinary person can become ordinary. Listen, for a long time, 
Noah lived above temptation, the temptations of his time. But in a moment of weakness, and I don't want you to tell me what you did, because I know you did it. We've all had moments of weakness. The sin of drunkenness and nakedness overcame him. Now that was his bad. He planted a vineyard, and the grapes must have been sweet. <laughs> now you ain't feel but that's all right. It was perhaps his lowest moment, the lowest moment in his life. But all is not lost because we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And I'm so glad I serve a God that's forgiving. I know he is. Let this be a lesson. Noah's sin teaches us that sin, evil temptation, can defeat us. And, 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 and this is what we got to look at. None of us is beyond the pull of the world's temptations. Right. One last thing, and I'm going to take my seat. We're going home. We're going to cook out and do whatever you got to do. Oftentimes, when we have become victorious, when we have done something that we think is good for the God that we serve, we achieve something, we finish the building, we, uh, we grew the congregation, we, the finances are good, the church is recognized, and we've done something, we, 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 we're achieving something good for the Lord. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we have been victorious in our fight against the devil. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your most dangerous moment. Mm -hmm. That's the time we get the big head. <laughs> That's when the door opens for Satan to come in. Yeah. Because you think Amen. it was all about you. Amen. That's the prime time for temptation to show up strong. And I. I so many preacher, preachers have bitten the dust because they felt it was their church, their pulpit, yeah. their congregation, their choir, mm -hmm. their deacon board. I ain't gonna take a look at TV because it's, it's disturbing stuff. People coming in the church to rob a preacher with hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry on. What about those of us who struggle to keep the doors open? Struggle to preach God's truth without bleeding the church, without giving the people false hope. What about us? People won't remember us necessarily without God, but everybody that don't want to come to church anyway will remember that. You are modeling for God wherever you are and whatever you do. Don't, 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 don't hurt God by the things we do. That's not noble and true. Nobody here wants to be labeled an unfaithful servant. Nobody here. We have a faith heritage. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and the prophets, and so many others. They are sharing us on. When we talk about they're looking over the banister, that's who's looking over. You see, they, they can't do anything until we finish the course. And they're cheering us on. Let us be faithful and run on in spite of the difficulties of life. Yeah. They can't become perfect until we are made perfect. We're going to be doing this thing together. We're going to be called up to meet him in the air. We will hear Jesus say, welcome, my good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but I, I want to hear him tell me. Come on, preacher, welcome, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up. Yes. And I'll make you ruler over many. Bless the Lord. Yes. Yes. Faithful. Yes. It's 
all of our being faithful. Might not seem like much, but it's everything. When we serve in God. Walter, before you go any further, as the doors of the church open, just keep playing. As the doors of the church are open, perhaps there's someone here who don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. Don't know him like no one knew him. Don't know him like some of us claim to know him. When we open the doors of the church and while we are standing, it's easy to bust a move, surrender, overcome all the doubt and fear. All I want you to do is give me your hand but give God your heart. Because he knows the real deal. If you're here, you want to surrender, now is the time. Why don't you come? Now, before Walter play, and before I give the benediction, how many of you need prayer this morning? Just so. My kids are not in church this morning. I need prayer for them. I need prayer for relatives. We all got relatives. I need prayer for my own health and strength. I need prayer to pastor the church. I need prayer for so many people that are dependent on the pastor to come and see about them. I need prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to the close of our service, and Walter's going to play, oh God, but I wanted to, I wanted to bless you. And I remember the first time when the Holy Spirit revealed to me in my ignorance, I, I often have said, why do God need me to bless him with the greatness of the Lord and the fullness thereof? You see, God wants you to surrender. And the only thing that you have that's worth something is you. You've been given. You can praise him as your praise. You can, you can praise him or not. God wants you to praise him. And so God, we come to praise him, come to worship you, we come to bless you, because you are worthy to be praised. We ask for your help, oh God, in our homes, on our jobs, in our health, in, in our relationships, because all of us got some crazy chums. And so God, we want you to move in our lives we got people that belong to this church that have not been for a long time because they are homebound. How much of this morning, oh God, on those that come to this church in wheelchairs, come sparingly. Remember, remember Reverend Gray this morning, brother, brother Gray, Lloyd is not well. And we're gonna to continue to pray for him. Deacon Carter, we're gonna to continue to pray for him. Melanie Prather. Gwen Battle. We're going to continue to Mary Woods, Teresa. We're going to continue to pray for them. Tara and Terrence and the children. We're going to continue to pray for them. God, we need to pray, pray for one another. Our mothers of the church, Brother Gillis, Mother Father, Mother Lila, her family. We're going to continue to pray, oh God. We give you blessings, oh God. We give you honor and we give you praise. Thank you for another opportunity to lift our voices, oh God, and bow our head because you are worthy to be praised. You may be seated. You may be seated.
All things that fit before man and God will be right. With our heads bowed. How are we just going to sing that song? Now may the grace of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with these his people henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say. Let the church. Say hey.